All right. Well, welcome everybody to this seminar. Will Hamilton alongside Steve Johnson. What's up, man? Not too much. Just uh, just enjoying my uh, you know Christmas uh, December vacation, I guess, for a uh, you know life of a guy on the tour, and uh, just getting ready to go for 2013. Sure, sure. Well, uh, we were just talking before we started the record. Uh, Steve's about to head down to Australia, actually on Christmas Day, right? So kind of yeah. a bump as a travel day, but. You yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, the flight's at like, you know, I don't know, 11.30 or 11.40 at night, so you, don't, you really get the whole day at home, and then, you know, I couldn't tell you how long the flight is or, or what happens. We, we lose a day somewhere in there, so get, I'll get, uh, get to Australia on the 27th, so it should be interesting. Well, you're, you're going to Brisbane, so I flew direct LAX to Melbourne last year, well, it's still this year technically, and that was 15 <laughs> hours, so you're probably somewhere in that range. Somewhere close to that ring. Uh, hoping to have a couple of good movies or something on the flight to, to keep me occupied. Get some good movies, get an aisle seat so you can get up and walk back and forth. Key. That's what I'm hearing. There you, the there you go. The flight. <laughs> All right. Well, this seminar, what we're going to be doing is drawing from your experience as, uh, from my understanding, the most decorated collegiate player uh, of all time. And then obviously you've just turned pro back in basically April, May, uh, that area. But we are going to be talking about drawing from your experiences. How can you help junior players, parents, and coaches? Uh, let me uh, quickly give the rundown of uh, of your bio. Uh, currently, 175 in the world, according to uh, ATPWorldTour.com. Like I said, most decorated collegiate player of all time. Four repeated 2009 to 2012 as the NCAA, the Trojans, the team championship. And then in 2011, 2012, you won the singles championship, uh, and you had an unprecedented, unprecedented 72 uh, match win streak. So, um, pretty crazy, man. What kept you from 73, dude? Well, uh, Paul Goldstein, who uh, you obviously are familiar with, said to me a couple years ago, he said, to be a good tennis player now, it's really about being a good athlete. It's not like you're a tennis-specific athlete. You're just a good athlete at this point. Right. You need it all, and it certainly sounds like by playing all these sports when you were younger, you kind of you did two things. First of all, you got that broad set of athletic skills, which are obviously paying dividends now. But you also didn't get burned out. I'm I'm sure in the juniors, maybe you know, thirteen, fourteen, some of the guys you played then by fifteen, sixteen were done with the sport because they just had played so much and been pushed so much when they were right. younger that they just lost the passion for it. Yeah, that happens. I mean, I've seen a lot of, a lot of friends of mine, or you know, even a lot of teammates that I, you know, a couple of teammates that I played with in college that, you know, were were top juniors in the world, and they they traveled the world to play ITFs, and they did this and that, and and you know, once they kind of realized that maybe oh, there's you know, there's something else out there. Or, you know, I really like I really like going to school. I really like you know studying you know this. I want to do this with my life one day. And and since they've been traveling the world for five or six years already. You know they they don't want to do another ten. I mean they they've had their their good run and you know it's just you know a different path that everybody takes and but uh, you know it's it's been it's been a, a different path I think I've taken than a lot of other people. But you know, I'm hoping that it uh, will turn out to be successful. And do you have any general piece of advice for either either the players or the parents themselves? Again, as you said, everybody's path is different. But are there are there any sort of lessons from your experience? or just experiences you think would be useful to share as a parent kind of says to themselves, well, how, how much do I push my 10-year-old or my 12-year-old? I mean, I, you know, the best piece of advice I can give, I mean, it, you know, it's everybody's got a different story, a different case. I mean, nothing, no one, I guess, path has proven to be successful uh, for everybody. So, you know, I, I would just say just have as much fun as you can. If it's not fun anymore, you need to take a step back and, and really, you know, evaluate what you really want to do. Um, you know, it's, and that goes, you know, the same for the parents. I mean, if you can see your kids aren't having fun, I mean, and, and you're the ones kind of pushing them to, to do this and that, I, I just don't think it's going to be fun for the kids. And I, I think it's, you know, something that really, you know, you need to have a good mindset for to be successful at. I mean, you need to, you know, have a good mindset to be successful at anything. But, you know, tennis is, is tough. I mean, you're you're out there by yourself and it's, you know, it's not like a, basketball team where there's four other guys out on the court with you and you get a you know if you're having a bad day somebody else steps up I mean it, it's you against the other guys so you know you always got to love the battle and and you know really appreciate being out there 
Are you familiar with uh, uh, Martin Blackman? He was recently, I believe, he was third in command at the at the USTA. But um, if if you're not, he he used to coach in the DC area and is one of my mentors. And and essentially just said exactly what you said. The way he phrased it was, I, I asked him. I said, "What is the most important element to being a good tennis player?" And I figured he'd say something like talent or or something to that effect. And he just said, "It's passion." You got to love yeah. it. You got to be passionate about it. That's the biggest, hands down, the biggest thing. Yeah, I mean that. That's definitely the big. I mean, I've seen a lot of talented, talented, talented individuals who just kind of just don't want to play anymore. They just, they just. If you don't have the fire inside, then it's and it's not enjoyable. You got to find something that you really like to do because, you know, if I didn't like playing tennis and I didn't like going out there to compete every day, this would be a, you know the wrong career. I mean, to travel the world and you know to to not want to do something seems kind of silly if, if it's not what you love. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, I'm in love with the game and I, I love going out there and competing and, and trying to figure out the different battles every day. Awesome. Well, let's get back to the, uh, the story. You, you turn 13, 14, go to high school. You basically focus entirely on tennis. And what's your progression at that point? Are your parents still coaching you? Do you go to a club now? What's, what's going on there? Yeah, so um, I kind of grew up in a in a in, in a town, you know, Orange. You know, my dad's club was about you know half hour, forty minutes south of there. Um, you know, I played on the high school team for the first three years in high school. Wow. Um, you know, it was you know it, it was fun for me. You know, I got to be on a team with guys, and you know, the the trade off was the tennis was was the level was pretty low. I mean, you know, my you know. All three years, I think I lost maybe three or four games combined you know, in, <laughs> in my league. I mean, so it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't about the tennis. I mean, it was about the, you know, the camaraderie, being on a team, and you know, you know, trying to, you know, do something that you know somebody hadn't done in my high school before. Um, and you know, from that point on, my dad was still coaching me, and um, you know, it was I went to the same high school both of my parents went to and my sister. So there was kind of some legacy there. You know, my dad played on the team, and my mom, and you know, all that kind of stuff. So. And then, you know, once I kind of hit 15, 16, 17, um, I kind of started going up towards, you know, the L.A. area more often. You know, there's just better guys. I mean, I hit with Ryan Thatcher a lot. Um, you know, he's a really good buddy of mine who went to Stanford. And, you know, there, there were some good kids up in L.A. So it was uh, kind of a different transition for me, you know, going up to L.A., you know, a couple times a week to practice. And, you know, I was still down here in, you know, Orange and where my dad was a couple days a week hitting with him and, and a couple of the, you know, the different kids down there so it was you know pretty equally spread out you know what I was doing but um, you know until I got to USC and you know kind of committed to go to USC then I started seeing you know Peter Smith and, and you know his the assistant at the time Brett Macy you know a ton you know in the summer before and leading up to my uh, time at USC. So so basically throughout your your high school career uh, your your pops was um, was was your coach? Yep. Okay okay yeah. and, and how did that uh, how did that dynamic work? I mean, when when uh, uh, you, you you know you're on the tennis court, he's 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 directing traffic. Does that conversation continue over to the dinner table, or is no. it? Yeah, I mean, I've always been pretty good. I mean, I'm always been pretty good at uh, you know. Once I leave the tennis court, it's like okay, you know, the day's done. You know, whatever happened happened. You know, it, it's pretty funny. I mean, it's you know, being in college, you kind of uh, I was able to see it more. You know the way I was able. I mean, you're able to separate. You know, you know tennis from you know social life. Mm -hmm. You know there'd be days in college where you know a couple. You know myself and a teammate, or myself and you know even Peter for that matter. We we'd go out. I mean it, it would wouldn't be a great practice. You know we'd yell at each other. We'd you know we'd have our you know differences, and then three hours later we're all having dinner together. I mean it's like you know we 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 just put it past us and and that's it. So you know same thing with my dad. You know on and off the court is is completely different. But you know he knew. That you know, to, for me to be successful was to be happy and to do what I, I really love to do. And um, you know, we we had a great relationship and we still do. And you know, it, it's kind of nice that he gets to you know, will travel with me sometimes and, and get to be a part of you know what I'm able to do now. So it's pretty special to share that with him. So it sounds like a, a big uh, you know an important lesson, important skill is be able to compartmentalize. You're on the court, you put in the work. As soon as you step off the court, it's over there. And then you don't you don't talk about tennis until the yeah. next time you sit back on the court. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I've got that relationship with pretty much you know all of my good friends. I mean, 
kind of one of the best examples is, you know, Dennis Kudla, you know, he's one of my, you know, really close friends and we play each other. I mean, we fly to Turkey and we play each other. And it's like, you know, I mean, this is bad luck that we, you know, end up playing each other in the quarters or, you know, whatever it was. And, you know, we, we, we beat each other in and it's, you know, a three hour match. And, you know, I end up, you know, winning a close one and it's like, well, I mean, we're in Turkey. It's not like we're going to go out with somebody else and go have dinner. I mean, we're, we're there together. We're, you know, and it's like, you know, we take our half hour, hour to kind of reset and regroup and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, we're, we're close. I mean, we're having dinner, we're out there laughing and it's like nothing ever happened in the middle of the day. So, you know, that's, I think that that's something big that tennis players have to learn that you can't take, you know, grudges with you on and off the court and, you know, you're in the sport for a long time and these are your close friends. So, um, you gotta, just gotta, you know, make the most of it and, you know, just really enjoy it.